this session will help us to understand more about kubernetes pod and whoever is having the doubts related to the kubernetes pod i hope this session will clarify all the basic doubts and also this session will help you to understand the differences between the docker container and kubernetes pod with that let's get started so once you write your application in dotnet or microservice once you create your application we will build with the docker file and we will create a docker container once you create a docker container we will push that docker container to the docker hub so this up to this part your your application your dotnet application is containerized now it is our next step to hand over our dotnet container or docker container to the kubernetes the next question arises is once docker container is created can we run docker container directly can we run docker container directly in a kubernetes the answer is no we cannot run directly the docker container in a kubernetes cluster that is not possible because kubernetes cluster will not understand the docker container and how to run the docker container inside the kubernetes cluster so how we will run is the question by using the pod we can run in a we can run our application in a kubernetes cluster so pod is a it's a small object we can say it's a very small object of the kubernetes so if you want to run docker container inside a kubernetes one must wrap your docker container one one must you are wrap the docker container inside a pod so that object we call it as a pod so can we directly move the docker container to the kubernetes answer is no because kubernetes won't understand the docker container how to run the docker container via how to run the docker container in a kubernetes the only way is pod so if you are not wrapping up your docker container inside a pod you can't run the docker container in a kubernetes cluster so what is a pod now the definition pod is it's a smallest object of kubernetes where container will be wrapped inside a pod so now next question can we have mul multiple docker containers inside the pod yes we can add multiple containers inside a pod so one of the best example is you can assume you implemented your dotnet application so dotnet application inside a container that is a docker container and you have another container which is having a database so how do you run it how we will make it in single pod you can wrap these two containers in a single pod so we we can call it as a multi container pod one of the another best example i can give is you can imagine the truck so what truck will be having so the truck will have the required goods right to transfer one place to another place so how the track how the truck will have the multiple object like that the pod will have multiple applications i can say or database or application or api so all the containers so this all the containers two containers the pod will take care to move to the kubernetes cluster so the pod will act as a truck here the truck will have how the truck will have the the real time object the same way pod will have containers to move the containers from your docker to kubernetes cluster so here not only not only one pod right we have uh, i think we have the the word of replica set 
so what is the meaning of replica set when you are when your pod is having the container 1 and container 2 dot net replication and database you can create multiple pods that we call it as a that we call it as a replica set so you can create a multiple pods that means one application copy we can create it as a multiple copies and move to the kubernetes cluster so what are the superpowers we have for kubernetes the superpowers the word i am taking here superpower the superpower of the kubernetes we have self healing scaling and rolling updates what is the meaning of the self healing self healing is nothing but whenever you are pod that means this pod which is having the two containers which is down so what kubernetes cluster will take care it will it will heal automatically that this uh, issue whatever the uh, issue is there for the pod that pod will be replaced with the, the live pod that means uh, it will automatically it will heal it will replace with defected pod with the actual pod so that is nothing but self healing as a name indicates it will heal automatically and what is the meaning of scaling say for example we have now seven pods are running in a kubernetes cluster you can create hundred or thousands of same copies, same pod copies, hundreds and thousand pod copies inside a Kubernetes cluster. We can create that we call it as a scaling. So another example, when you are up, when whenever users of your applications are keep on increasing, you can easily scale up your application with multiple pods that will help application to uh, load faster and load load balancing and uh, the performance also it will increase because instead of seven pods you are creating hundreds of pods there in the kubernetes cluster so what is the meaning of the rolling updates here the rolling updates are nothing but uh, any security level patches or any issues we can roll up rolling up that means we can replace that uh, pod with the next version of pods that's a very easy process we can do it in the kubernetes that's why we call it as a super power of kubernetes so now once you move your dotnet and uh, dotnet container and uh, database container which is having the pod once you move your pod to the kubernetes cluster whether your pod will get super power what all these three super powers the answer is no so once you create a pod and give it to the Kubernetes cluster, the pod will not directly get all these superpowers, self-healing, scaling, rolling updates. It will never get directly. So how Kubernetes KTS get superpower? So how your pod will get superpower? That means automatically your pod should be self-healing, scaling and rolling updates. Those powers, how it, your application will get? So the answer is via controllers. So when your application when your pod is having the multiple containers and when you are handing over it to the kubernetes so we will deploy i'm using the word deploy when you deploy your pod to the kubernetes cluster we can only deploy via controllers what all the controllers are available now the next question what controllers are available to deploy your pod to the kubernetes that is deployments daemon sets and stateful sets we'll look at about all these three you can three uh, controllers deployments controller daemon sets stateful sets controllers in in uh, next we can see it in the upcoming sessions so next once you have the controllers and deploy your pod to kubernetes cluster that means your application the pod will be having all the related containers of your application so your application copies also we can create so then the next thing is can we is it best practice to create multiple containers in a single pod the answer is no the best practice is always try to create one pod and one container so one pod should have only one container that is a best practice so already in the dotnet we might have seen it's a separation of concerns like uh, each uh, pod will be having a dependencies of one application only rather than creating a multiple container so you can create in this case two pods we can create it out it is possible using the multi-container pods but best practice is using one container in one pod 
so now what is pod resource sharing with the container so whenever you are wrapping up your containers inside a pod uh, so your pod is having the multiple containers or single container so what it will happen is the pod is nothing but it is a um, resource i can say it's a resource the pod is a it will be having a multiple resources right so what all the resources pod can have maybe file system pod will be having the network stack ip addresses routing tables shared memory shared volumes these things your uh, kubernetes pod will be having so whatever the resources your pod is having everything will be shared to the your docker container which is running inside the pod so that that is why here i have mentioned pod resource sharing with the container so it's a the pod all the file systems network and stack ip addresses routing tables ports shared memory volumes everything will be shared to the uh, docker container and what about the ip address so for example you are, you are wrapping up your container inside the pod when you are wrapping up so pod will be having its own ip address so whatever uh, the container which is running inside the pod will share the ip address as well so if you see the first pod these two containers will have the ip address of this pod and the second container will be having the ip address of this pod so containers were wrapped inside the pod so now the network so all these ip addresses of pod will be shared with the pod network so how do you create a pod how you will deploy it that is uh, already in the previous uh, sessions we have seen uh, by using a manifest file so how the manifest file looks is it's an aml file where the kind what type of uh, file it is aml file it's a pod and uh, how you are wrapping up your dotnet application inside a pod is if you see this is having a metadata and this part the first part it's a pod this is a pod and the second part this portion we call it as a container specifications we will define here so container and the name of the container and the what image you are running inside a container and the container port we will define here this part it's a container and this part is a pod so in high level uh, so docker image will be inside a container the container will be inside a pod so so container will be inside a pod so again on top of the pod again deployment will come so that we can see so how do you get the pod this is a command we will use kubectl get pods if you use the kubectl get pods it will show the number of uh, pods which are running in a kubernetes cluster so how you are, how we have deployed the pod to the kubernetes cluster yes we have seen the controllers are required to deploy pod to the kubernetes cluster but directly see here we have not mentioned any deployment controller or daemon set controller those things we have not mentioned because even without deployments we can de without controllers without kubernetes controller still we can deploy your pod to the kubernetes cluster but only thing your pod will not get the super powers that means where uh, super powers in the sense uh, um, if whenever if the pod is goes down recreation um, state for, like uh, increasing the copies of uh, the pod that super powers it will not get which we have seen in the previous uh, slide if you have uh, i think that's all about uh, this related to the pod information just wanted to share with you all if you have any questions uh, feel free to post in the comments section thank you all for watching the video